I began to realize on the river what I had already realized on the road was that I was really an insignificant little spot in the universe. Really, this river was gonna, it had its own life and I was gonna participate in it rather than it par participate in my life. Tired of an unfulfilling life in Kansas City, Missouri, Patrick Dobson left his job and his home and set off on foot across the Great Plains. It took Dobson two and a half months to walk over 1,400 miles. When he finally arrived in Helena, Montana, his next step was to canoe the Missouri River back to Kansas City. He knew the journey would be intense, but his hope was that the voyage would reconnect him with his life. When I'd seen it in Three Forks, it was uh, a medium-sized stream, uh, something that I could get my head around, and he, I could see myself canoeing it. But when I got to the uh, water at uh, Wolf Creek Bridge, it was big, full, grown-up river, and I lost any kind of sense of confidence that I had. Uh, I, I knew that I had gotten myself into something that maybe was too deep for me. People have frequently asked me, did, did I ever think about turning around and coming home? And it never, it had certainly occurred to me, but it was never a serious thought. People were invested in this. I mean, this guy had sent me a canoe from Maine. Uh, people at home had, uh, you know, wished me well, and you know, how was I supposed to face them if I turned around and came home? Plus, how was I supposed to face myself if I did that? Uh, so once I committed to the trip, I committed to it all the way. Today, Dobson is a writer, historian, iron worker, and even holds a PhD in history. His journey for self-discovery began in the mid-1990s. With no prior canoeing experience, once he reached Montana, a boatmaker had a canoe waiting for him, and then he hired a guide to give him some brief canoeing lessons. A few hours of practice, a new boat, and some research are all Dobson had to get him home safely. I had gained some confidence, momentary confidence, about what I was doing, and I laid back in the boat and wound up dozing off, uh, going to sleep. And uh, suddenly the boat rocks up. I wake up and there's a, a thunderstorm coming down from upstream. The rain hit, and the lightning and thunder. Uh, and the day grew really, really dark uh, to the point when the lightning flashed. Uh, and you catch the water droplets and stuff coming off these big waves that were rolling up over the front of my boat and slid into a, a, a bunch of willows wrap those willows around the uh, cross brace of the canoe, by that time hail had begun. And it wasn't, it started out pea-sized hail, uh, and it hurt. Mm -hmm. But then it got to be marble-sized hail, and it really hurt. Uh, ripped a um, terry cloth towel out of my dry bag, put it over my head and shoulders, and got into a ball, and was just gonna wait out the storm. Slowly the storm begins to back off, uh, the hail ends, the rain begins to, to ease up. I get out of my ball and the canoe has two or three inches of, of hail in it, along with all the water. And I get out this ridiculously small little pan that I had to bail it out and um, got back into the stream. And it was literally maybe 200 yards I came around the corner and there was the park I was gonna camp out that night. And it just seemed so ridiculous to me that here I was so panicked and afraid and I felt so far away from everything. And I got used to being on the river by myself. And in that way, it seemed to be easier. By the time I get a week into the trip, I really have all kinds of confidence about the way that I can handle the boat. Dobson discovered early the big lakes on the river were more than he could handle, and finding a way around these massive bodies of water was a must. He met a man that agreed to drive him and his canoe from Williston, North Dakota, to Yankton, South Dakota. This would put Dobson past all of the lakes and would allow him to continue on his journey. This guy, Rick Hickok, uh, said that he'd take me down to Yankton, South Dakota, to where the last dam on the Missouri River is, and uh, at Gavin's Point, 
and all he would all he wanted was me to pay for gas and the night in the motel mm -hmm. and uh, faced with that or these this terrible wind and stuff on the lakes I, I decided that that was that was the way I needed to go it was agonizing because I didn't want to skip all of that I didn't want to move forward in time like that but like I said I wanted to, I, had, I had this ache to see my daughter but I, I didn't want to go home yet and and cutting all that time off really hurt uh, it was really some besides the conditions one of the things I agonized over was that time lost and it would put me closer to home mm -hmm. and uh, so it was a very difficult decision to make uh, I, I because I told people I was going to do this I told myself I was going to do this uh, but in the end I, I had to recognize my limitations and um, took a ride around the lakes. The river went from a frightening moving body of water to a welcome companion. On his trip, he saw breathtaking landscapes, encountered wildlife, and met people that would begin to shape his way of thinking in a direction he was looking for. People sometimes ask me, Does it, did it change your mind? Did it you know, renew your faith in, in human beings and Americans and so on? I already have that faith, right? I already have uh, an optimistic vision of people. Uh, the people who, I'm, who I would meet along the road were gonna be the people who were gonna be friendly. Uh, on the upper river in, in Montana in particular, huge rafts of uh, American pelicans. They're white uh, and it would seem that they were standing on the surface of the river when they were actually standing on a bar just beneath the surface. Towards Sioux City, I spend a night on, a, on an old sandbar that's, that now has trees and stuff on it. In the night after the storm, I hear these little pats on the side of my tent, and I, I for the life of me, can't figure it out. It's not a deer, it's not a raccoon, it's not a skunk. I have no idea. I've never experienced this before in my life. And so I get up very cautiously and zip open the tent, stick out my light, and literally a sea of frogs around my tent. I uh, woke up the next morning and they were all gone. There was no sign of them. Uh, you know, I may have been dreaming. Dobson made it home to Kansas City and would eventually write a book about his journey. The first book tells of his walk from home to Montana. The second, titled Canoeing the Great Plains, shares with readers the voyage down the Missouri River and how it changed his life. If you're waiting for the time to come, it's not going to come. You have to, you just have to do it. I don't think, wow, I did that. I think of the stuff that I still want to do. So looking back, yeah, I did this stuff. It has transformed my life. It continues to transform my life. There are still more things that I want to do.